Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. Ex-wife begs to hear her out. After I catch her taking it from the back in my own bed, gets dumped instead. I'm 32 years old. I met my girlfriend, we're calling her Joanne, 29 years old, on the 3rd of 1st of December 2004 at New Year's Eve party. For me it was almost love at first sight. We only talked for an hour, but I couldn't get her out of my head for weeks. I was dating someone else at the time and the second week in January, I was still thinking about this relatively trivial conversation I'd had with Joanne. I told my current girlfriend of the time that things couldn't work out. I didn't know if I would see Joanne ever again, but I'd felt something in that one conversation I'd never felt before. It was an amicable split. I was honest and told her I liked her, but didn't love her. I tried to track Joanne down through friends and the like. These were the days before Facebook, and I never used MySpace. I finally got a hold of her number, and when I rang she said she remembered me too. I asked her out on a date and we spent a lot of time together. Another guy in our social group fancied Joanne so we took it slow. We were very cryptic about how we felt and didn't even kiss until about a month of seeing each other. After that our relationship went off on a rocket, and I'd never even dreamed of feeling that way before. We were inseparable and intolerable no doubt. We went everywhere together and she loved the things I did and I loved the things she did. I never met a girl that got into things like snowboarding and surfing so quickly, and she loved it. I even took dance lessons and mastered the samba with her exclamation it's not been all sunshine and lollipops though, and I'll be the first to admit, we've had our problems like any other couple. we broken up once about three years ago, but wasn't apart for more than three months. We've lived both together and apart. Whatever happened, I thought I'd been the most reasonable, loving, caring boyfriend I could be. She got pregnant when we was about one year in, and I stuck completely by her. She said she wanted it, that she couldn't abort it, and I said I'd be with her no matter what. When she miscarried I took weeks off work to be by her side. I told her that I was there for no matter what, always. When she was kicked out of home, because her parents moved to Australia I financially supported her until she got on her feet. These were tough times. It was hard for both of us, but I felt we grew because of them. I felt that going through all this was something special. So I proposed on New Year's Eve last year after taking her to the place we first met. A bar with a rooftop balcony thing. I told her that we should see if it was open on the off chance before we went home at around 2 a.m. She agreed but when we got there she noticed it wasn't a bar anymore. I already knew this beforehand and through my contacts I got in touch with the music shop owner and he let me use his roof. I took her up the fire escape and I had the whole roof almost exactly how it looked at that night which included renting a huge fish tank and a bunch of Christmas lights. The whole thing sent me back $600, girl. There was a table in the middle with two glasses and a bottle of champagne. I got down on one knee and she cried and said yes. For the last six months I've been working really hard. I'm in sales and we've had a potentially life-changing deal coming through that would make the company I'm with millions in the next 5-8 years. I haven't stopped working my arse off and I've told her it's going to be tough, but that I'm doing it for us. If I get it, I told her, we could have an absolute dream wedding. Well, the last couple of months have been nail-biting, but I finally secured the deal and netted myself a huge bonus and job security for life. I was on cloud nine, so I bought Joanne and I some tickets to go away and celebrate. Yesterday, my boss let me go home early because of my work, and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to surprise her. I nipped in the flower shop and got her a bunch of white roses before slipping back home for a shower and to get out of my suit. I was driving in my white Merc to her house on the top of the world. Work was brilliant, the weather was beautiful. I had the perfect surprise and I couldn't wait to tell her. Anyway, when I arrived there was a SUV parked outside that I had seen before but couldn't place. The penny didn't even drop when the door was unnaturally locked. I unlocked it and called her name. There was some music playing and I didn't hear her reply. I figured she was in the shower and fixed myself a glass of water and some water for the flowers. In the kitchen, there was some cheap wine and two glasses. Then I heard the bed banging. My heart sank and I pieced it all together. I used to think my heart sank was a metaphor, but I actually felt something drop inside my chest. It was like going on one of those bungee rides in theme parks. I almost dropped the glass. I walked to the stairs and at the bottom there were these pairs of ruined old leather boots covered in dirt. I was red with rage. I walked up the stairs and could hear him calling her a bad girl. I swung her bedroom door open. There she was getting ducked in the arse. 
I you not. He was ducking her in the arse. She leaped up instantly, and before I knew it he had his pants on. I looked at him and recognized him. It was this guy that owns a vegan cafe near my place. We'd been a few times, and he had a couple of parties she had been to with friends. He tried to explain himself, but I just told him to get the duck out right now. He left so quick he forget to take his cheap wine with him, though. I couldn't believe it. She ran over to touch me, hug me, or something but I just threw her back down on the bed. I told her she disgusted me and I left. I went straight to my car and she followed my apathetically asking me to hear her story. I told her not to duck and call me and dropped my personal mobile out the window. I own a work one but it's blocked from anyone other than colleagues. I went home and got in the shower and just cried. I can't believe it. The more I think about the relationship the more I cry, I thought about the miscarriage and cried, and then my proposal, and cried, and then the first time I met her, and I cried even more. I've not been into work today. I called and told my boss everything. He's a great friend and on of three people who know. He's told me to have a holiday from work and that I've done more than enough in the last year. He told me to take a week and then see how I feel. She's been knocking on my door and calling my landline so I plugged it out. My friend stopped by earlier after he heard what happened from my boss. A lot of my friends are worried. They haven't heard from me and can't get in contact because I dropped the phone. Anyway, I know the standard advice. I'm not looking for that. Can someone just please tell me why? I loved her. I do love her. So ducking much. I just wanted us to be happy and I had worked so hard for that. All that hard work, it wasn't for me. It was for us. How could she ducking do this after she ducking miscarried my baby and I paid for a stupid ducking art studies when her parents ducked off without a trace? I'm just confused. How could she ducking betray me after everything we've been through? I don't understand it. What would make a girl that loves you, that said yes to marriage with you, that was gonna have your baby, that was with you for seven years, that called you pet names, that you would cuddle and make love to? What would she do it? With this broke Jack. This piece of that couldn't support a ducking puppy at it. Some of you have given me the advice to say take an STD test. I've already booked one with my private physician for tomorrow. As far as what other action I've taken, I just bought a new mobile online and I have cancelled all debit payments on my card for her gym membership, business classes, and whatnot. I don't think I'm going to ask her why. I'm just angry now. I think the answer is obvious. She didn't care enough about me to have a bit of restraint. Update. So it's been about a week now since it happened, and I can just say this Reddit. I'm heartbroken. I was angry and confused last time I posted but now, I'm just lonely and devastated. I've been taking long walks in the evening, smoking about a dozen cigarettes and then just finding a quiet place to sob my eyes out. My self-esteem has taken a turn for the worse. I've reconnected my phone now and I seem to be staring at it waiting to hear from her constantly, waiting to hear her beg for me back. It hasn't happened like that though. The day after I posted on Reddit I met up with her at a Starbucks to find out some answers to my question. Why? The truth is she didn't have any. She said that she didn't know why she did it. That she does love me and that she does want to marry me but that sometimes. When she was with me lately she just didn't feel like she really wanted to be there. Then I said that I feel like that sometimes but I don't go out and duck waitresses. That she turned and went all crazy. Saying I'm too possessive and that she should have some freedom. She said that cheating happens every day and I shouldn't take it so personally. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Then the tears came. And then the begging. I asked her what it is she loved about me and she couldn't say anything beyond the standard cliches. I listed off a huge string of things about her and finally said, those were things I loved about you. I told her how betrayed I felt. How I never imagined being in another relationship apart from ours in my whole life ever again. I told her that this was probably the worst thing that anyone had done to me personally in my whole life. Her tears set me off, and before I knew it were two bawling idiots sat in Starbucks with everyone looking at us. Finally I told her that despite how destroyed I was now, that there were some signs that it was coming anyway. I told her that I don't think she felt the same way about the relationship as I did, at least not in the last year. She was still crying and I said, Joanne, thank you some of the best years of my life and go duck yourself for ruining them. I'll send your stuff over tomorrow. You can keep everything I have apart from the ring and my external hard drive. The next day, a mutual friend went over to hers and dropped her stuff off and picked up my external. I took the ring off her at Starbucks. Since then, well, it hasn't been pretty. I've been smoking so much. I never usually smoke. 
I must be going through 20 cigarettes a day. I suppose it's better in the short term than alcohol. The worst bits are finding things that remind me of her, finding some PJ she'd left here in the wash, smelling her perfume walking past a chicken town, seeing her shampoo in the shower, coming across, pictures on my computer. All of it takes a toll.